Good day everyone and welcome to this video about my search for the Fire Song DLC. So this is update 37 and honestly nothing much has changed overall for PvP and for my search particularly literally nothing happened. So you could wonder what would even be the point of making another video for it in this patch. It would be a good question to ask and to be honest there's no real reason for it, nor is there any reason to play this class to begin with. It's just that it's been months now since I've given this another go, as in the, pre in the previous patch I only tried it for the start and then moved on to other classes anyway. It's looking like this patch is going to be the same. I do want to still make at least one video about Mash Sork every patch, for all time's sake and for the people that want to hear my thoughts on it. And with that I also want to provide some builds that you could possibly try on it if you're really stubborn in running this class. So this video is going to be a mix of the developments or lack thereof and my thoughts about my shock combined with the builds I tried and that I think are relatively the best for Magic Assault through this patch. The problems that this class deals with are the same as before too, but to give a quick recap, basically to run a Magic Sorcerer you have two main options, shield and no shield builds. Starting with shield builds, you have a relatively large amount of defense, but still not that much compared to the defensive toolkits of any other class, but that does come in any case at the price of having very little build variety and especially little damage. Stacking maximum magicka simply doesn't net you much damage compared to spell damage or procs or whatever, so you'll struggle to kill anything while still having only mediocre survivability at best. And then the second way to run is with no shield builds. You can build more damage to the point where you'll actually see the enemy's health bar move a little, but this overall mediocre amount of damage does come at the cost of having no defensive toolkit. I mean that quite literally, you don't have a native defensive toolkit outside of shields really. The only thing that comes close are streak and dark conversion, while those can be used defensively, their main purpose is still utility. One is for movement and the other is for sustain. You also have the Twilight Heal, but that thing can just be killed and then you have no defensive toolkit anymore. And then there's also Crit Surge, but that's more of a buff skill that gives you a small bit of extra healing on top. So basically without shields you try to make do with non-class specific healing, such as Vigor, Blessing of Restoration or Rapid Regeneration. You survive mostly by being some sort of angry mosquito that flies just close enough to be heard, but also gets clapped in case it doesn't keep its distance constantly. Alright, so with that little discussion out of the way, uh, for some actual builds that I recommend running if you play Mass Sork, I have one for each of those two playstyles I mentioned. Firstly, for the shield build, obviously it's going to be a maximum magicka stack, but with some twists to make it deal a bunch more damage than what you would usually get. And technically that does include an exploit as well. So starting off with the gear, the main thing is that I'm going to run a Trogakin 5 pieces here, combined with the Asylum's Perfected Inferno staff, non-perfected will work too. But here's a bit where the exploit revolves about. Um, Drogakin of course is a pretty old set now that people know like this is going to increase your damage a lot if you have many separate little instances of damage. And a good way to get that is with status effects. And that's why you run a charged Inferno to get all those status effects running. But a science protected Inferno staff does the same thing, it's also going to apply status effects, so you might wonder why would you run charged and the Asylum's Inferno if the Asylum is already going to proc status effects anyway, this, it does not get a bonus from charged. And the reason of that is that the status effects from Asylum's Inferno are for some reason different, they are a, a copy of the normal status effects you would get by casting a skill that may apply status effect, but they are counted as separate on top of the usual status effect. So that means that if you cast a crushing shock with the Assassin's Perfected Inferno, you can proc all the status effects twice. You can proc, um, I think it's, I'm not sure about burning, but in any case for concussion and shield, you can proc those things twice. And that is a whole bunch of extra instances of damage on your spammable, and that will benefit greatly from Drogin, and that's how you can push damage a bit higher than what you would usually get. I don't know for how long this exploit is going to be in the game, I presume for the rest of this patch, so I'm putting it out here for now. It's been in the game for a while too, and it's been available to patrons, but I wanted to put it here now too, because honestly I, I don't care. So 
that and Drogen is your damage. And then to combine this off with to get a decent amount of maximum magicka, I have two pieces of trainee. And on the back bar, I have a one piece willpower, so that's going to give a bunch of maximum magicka. I have the Death Dealer's Feet mythic for some more maximum magicka. And then lastly, I have the uh, Baron Tursk and Magma Incarnate one piece monster sets to give myself the necessary sustain as well. And with all that on top, uh, together with all the uh, attributes and utility stuff that we'll go over in a bit, you'll have about 44 to 45k on both Max and Magica. That will go up more once your Death Deal's feed procs to about 47.5k, something like that. Your health for that will also be close to 30k and your stamina will be close to 20k that way. On the jewelry I go full arcane, on the uh, restoration staff of willpower I have defending, on the assignments and furnace staff I have charged, I already went over that. And then just on the gear I have uh, full impenetrable, you can have a, a couple of pieces of well fitted if you want to or reinforced chest, but impenetrable is an important trait to get a decent amount from if you're not running rally and cry otherwise you will get one shot even harder by night blades that uh, might pop you from stealth. Or any other class really that builds into crit damage. For the enchants I have full maximum magic enchants on the body and then on the jewelry I have full uh, tri-stat uh, regeneration enchants to get enough sustain. If you want to push damage a bit higher still you can go for spell damage enchants but if you want VX I do feel like you need this amount of sustain to get anywhere really because shields are also really expensive and streak obviously as well. So that's a bit of a choice you have to make for yourself but I have three uh, tri-sustain glyphs here. Next up for the skills, it's a pretty regular toolkit of course, as always, Streak, Crystal Fragments, Crushing Shock to proc all the set effects, Haunting Curse, Boundless Storm and Power Overload. I don't run Fury and this Fury here because I would rather cast Crushing Shock another time than Endless Fury since Crushing Shock is going to proc a lot of set effects with the Charge trait and the Asylum Staff on top. And then on the back bar I have Bound Ages that will help me get a lot of Maximum Magic as well, Lampant Magic, Healing Ward, Hardened Ward, Dark Conversion and Life Giver. This is your defensive ultimate. You can also slot Undo if you want, but Life Giver can be a bit more reliable and allows you to get some level of tankiness to go and pressure somebody down real quick as well. And then lastly for the champion points, I have in the blue tree, Master at Arms, Force of Nature. This gives a lot of extra penetration when you run a build that revolves around stats effects. Deadly Aim, Iron Clad. In the red tree I have Sustained by Suffering, Pain's Refuge, Rejuvenation and Bastion. Rejuvenation is a, is a flex spot, you can also run other things here like Celerity if you want more mobility, or Survival Instincts or Slippery for more stamina sustain. And then to finish off with, the um, attributes and such all into Maximum Magicka, the race should be ideally higher for Breton. And then for the uh, Mundus I have the Mage, the food is with Sugar Skulls, it's important to have Vampire Stage 3 on this build to get Undeath. And then for the potions, I run the spell power potions that will give me Magicka, Major Intellect, Major Sorcery, and Major Prophecy. Then for a no shield build, the two main ways I see for running that is by stacking either spell damage or crit. But the template for both is sort of the same, so I'm just going to present it as one build. Um, I will present it as a spell damage build, so just trying to stack spell damage for your damage and for your healing. And that I do by running Burning Spellweaf on the front bar. That's just a good increase to spell damage and pretty reliable with your Inferno Staff Light Attacks and Crushing Shock as well. And then on the back bar Rallying Cry for some very necessary defense as well as some more spell damage on top of that. And then to combine that off with I have the One Piece Marken and a uh, One Piece again of Baron Trusk and Marvel Incarnate for the sustain together with the Trainee Chest. For the traits on the Inferno Staff you want to have Sharpened, on the Resto Staff you want to have Defending with the Escapist's Poison. You do want it on the previous build too by the way, but I think I forgot to mention it. As an enchant here I have the Spell Damage enchant to stack some more Spell Damage on top of everything else. And then for the uh, Jubilee it is full infused Spell Damage, and then for the gear reinforced on the chest, full Triglyphs, and then either Divines or Well Fitted, depends on what you go with. But if you go with a uh, crit build, if you want to go with that instead of a spell damage build, it's a good idea to use Medusa as a front bar set here, because that's going to give you about 10% crit chance and 10% crit damage. You don't have minor falls as a mash lock anyway, so it's a good set to front bar here. Having a crit build does allow you to get some more bursts, but I do also feel like your healing is a little bit less reliable that way. 
In any case, one more thing I would change if you go for a crit build is the Mundus, because with a spell damage build, I just go with the Apprentice, and on a crit build, I would go with the Shadow. And with the Shadow, it's, it's a good idea to go full Divines. On, with them. When I'm running the Apprentice, I do prefer to run well fitted, because Divines does not increase the value from Apprentice very much. Then for the skills, in either case, I have a bit of a, the usual thing. Streak, Crystal Fragments, Crushing Shock, uh, Haunting Curse, Elemental Susceptibility and Power Overload. Elemental Susceptibility is a good idea to run this patch if you can, because they buff that skill quite a bit. Um, now it's going to proc Burning, Chilled and Concussion every time instead of just one of the three. And then on the back bar I have Bandless Storm, Critical Surge, Raptor Generation, Vigor, Dark Conversion and Life Giver. Your healing options, I usually go with Vigor and Rapid Generation here, which is a weak healing toolkit, but you really don't have much. And then of course Dark Conversion and Critical Surge count a little bit for your healing as well. If you want a burst heal, you can try running Combat Prayer instead of uh, Rapid Generation or Vigor. And you also have the option of running the pet, as I mentioned earlier, but if you are in any sort of outnumbered situation, or even a 1v1, people will just kill it and then you have no healing. And that's it for the skills. Um, for the gear, well, for the champion points, I mean, I have uh, Mastered Arms, Fighting Finesse, further emphasizing that crit damage, Deadly Aim, Focus Mending. If you go with a spell damage build, you can also go with Wrathful Strikes instead of Fighting Finesse here. And then for the Red Tree, I have Sustained by Suffering, Pain's Refuge, Fortified, and Survivor Instincts. Fortified is the flex spot here. You can run, as in the previous builds, flex spot rejuvenation here but i do like fortified for a no shield build because i will i'm taking a lot of damage and my defense isn't that great so i'm trying to get sustain and survivability wherever i can so this helps with that and then for the food and the potions i have um also got smoke bear horns and then for the potions i have essence of immovability which is going to give me magical spell crit and uh, immunity to knockback and disable effects you can see it right here the race is the same, high elf or button, and you also want vampire stage 3 for the in-death passive, as always. But that's it for the uh, builds in here, so just to finish off with, um, if Magic Assault doesn't work, you could also try to run some sort of Stamp Sork or Hybrid Sork instead. If you really want to run Sorcerer in some way, that is the best way to do it, because Mash Sork is very weak right now. I'm not really found those hybrid playstyles myself, I've always been a mass or role player sort of, and equipping dual wield or a bow or whatever it doesn't sit right with me. But I do want to end the video by presenting one of those options here real quick, sketch them out for you. So hybrid sork is actually pretty decent, especially in like a 1v1 setting, because you can have a lot of pressure and even though your survivability isn't that great, by playing in a, a duel or in a small group or a BG or a Zerdal, you can deal with this quite well. It's still nowhere near Warden or Nightblade, for example, but it's definitely better than what I've shown before in this video. So for a hybrid build, what I see going around these days as most effective is dual wield and inferno setups, sometimes also both setups. But as an example of a dual wield and inferno setup, you can build a low single target pressure on it by going with the master dual wield with optionally the Vatashkin Inferno back bar. And combine that with the Way of Fire set, and then another 5-piece set such as Rallying Cry or Twice Fanged Serpent. Instead of a second 5-piece set, you could also run a monster set and a mythic with uh, two pieces of Trinity then. As an example of the monster sets, you could run the uh, one-piece Sustain, Magma and one-piece um, Baron Tusk, the way I've done for Magicka Sorcerer as well here. And a good example of a mythic is uh, Mark and Majesty. The main thing is though to have the stamina toolkit survivability, so you get your attributes into stamina with lots of roll dodges and you can cast vigor and dark deal a lot and then you get a lot of damage through your proc sets being way of fire and uh, master dual wield and sometimes also attrition if you want. But yeah that's, that's, that's just a quick presentation of what else you can do for a hybrid sork. Um, maybe I'll put, a, I'll put a build like that on the website as well as always together with the uh, Magic is also here in case you want to see it. But that's about it for Master Dispatch. I don't really have more to say about it for the coming months, I think. I'll keep you updated every patch, of course. I love this class, so I'll for sure try it again every new patch. Check out the website for the build I mentioned. And if you feel like giving me a little support or want some personal one-on-one -on -one help, there's a Patreon link in the description. In any case, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.